<sighs> I love how half the time when I'm trying to like pet my phone up over here on my desk that I'm always playing the oh please don't fall, please don't fall, um, juggle with it. And so still at this point, please don't fall. <laughs> Anyway, hi guys, and there is, I got a, like a little salt candle holder and then I made the mistake of unwrapping it on my chair of my desk. It's, uh, yeah, it feels a little weird right now. So anyway, hi guys, how's it going? You good? I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is my review of Tower of Thorns by Juliet Marillier and I have to say it has second book syndrome in, in a lot of ways it's slower much slower it, it, it's like a nice little it, it's a nice little camp out in like some deep folklore which honestly I personally feel like I I appreciated it I, I don't know how many people would though T to be honest, if we're just going to like get to the fact of the matter, I've heard a lot of people just didn't like the book. And I think part of the reason why they didn't like the book was because Galus, for instance, you like her and then you don't like her. It's very interesting how people are like, well, I like Galus, but she's kind of a bitch. She's a bit of a lying, but she's a lying bitch and she betrayed, um, spoilers, she betrayed Blackthorn. Uh, I won't tell you how she betrayed Blackthorn, but she betrayed Blackthorn and it caused Blackthorn to be in a bit of a predicament that almost seemed permanent until Grimm did something. And when Grimm did something, it made the thing that might have been permanent not permanent. And, and it was also, it was very much a tragic scene too. To the end of the book was very tragic. Like all these, um, almost these characters you come to sympathize. Cause I'm going to say this. I, I don't know about other people, but I ended up sympathizing a little bit with Gatelis's character at the very end of the book. Just kind of like when you start to realize that she, She's in between a rock and a hard place because someone was very vengeful and she she needed to have like her this this fae needed to have her power streak and because of how much this fae needed to have her power streak she basically just she destroyed everybody's lives and that was just it was it's morally it's a morally reprehensible thing to experience and it's interesting with how it goes down and I for me I enjoyed it I really enjoyed watching that I enjoyed seeing um, Blackthorn just kind of a lot of people one of the things that people didn't like about this book was that Blackthorn was falling into traps that she should have seen well the thing is when you read the first book, Blackthorn is still trying to come out of so much. She's still trying to deal with her revenge. Now, the thing is, like, the thing, and, and maybe they're talking about Flannan, but because Flannan, spoiler alert, betrays Blackthorn at the end of the book. This, this book is a lot, is very much about betrayal, which I thought was interesting. But that's a whole, like, that, that, that's a theme. Theme is definitely betrayal, and I enjoyed that theme quite a bit because it's a very interesting theme and it has affected many people in a lot of ways and a lot of times negatively and in this one you see the extremes of both extremes of how betrayal can look but also how loyalty can beat through that betrayal and beat it down and almost make it seem not to matter um anyway flannan is one of the characters that had been with around Blackthorn and her husband Cass and son um, Brennan and Flannan had just he he was he was a scholar and he went around and he helped he would like scholar around at monasteries and great castles and all this stuff and he betrayed her to the man that 
hurt her and her family the most or hurt her her family like she Mathwin killed Black Thorn's family basically and she went down a dark path and continued to go down a dark path dark path until basically she met Grimm and um and I don't remember the elf's the Fae's name right now um I don't remember his name right now, but there's a Fae, and the Fae was the one that broke around the first book. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It, it's very interesting how, um, like they, the, the um, Juliet Verlier plays on betrayal a lot. And the betrayal doesn't have to be, like, it, it doesn't have to be anything like you know small like not not even just like the sort of like, like I, I almost feel like because because there's a lot of also a little bit of interesting like social justice like commentary on um uh on some of the characters almost like you have um like you have a little bit of um, Blackthorn going, well, why didn't um, Galus take care of her own people? Why isn't this going on? Why isn't she helping her own people? Well, that's because Galus is dealing with her own existential crisis, and she probably has been trying and just literally gave up because she'd been alive, spoilers, for 200 years. And mortals are not supposed to be alive for 200 years. After a while, I think mortals end up giving up on being immortal because you know I mean it's an interesting it's an interesting play on immortality and again like you know just to have the same thing happen every 50 years and to have to hear it and have to live with it like where, where a lot of the tenets of that curse was it was insane and it was interesting con mail con meal con mail I think it's con mail that's the Faye's name who broke her out of prison prison in the first book. Just so you know. Blackthorn. Broke Blackthorn broke Blackthorn out of prison in the first book. That's him. Um so anyway, he's a very interesting character and it's fun almost to watch um watch the dynamic between her and Conmail at the beginning of the story. Um and then also just kind of see her almost like she'll just but almost willing to break his trust a little bit, even though they've known each other for about a year now. And it's so very much, remember that literary term in English class, God versus, man versus God? I kind of feel like this is what's going on a little bit because Conmail is the, bene like almost represents the, the benevolent God who broke, um, his servant out of bondage and Blackthorn represents the person who just the, the people like the Jewish people Blackthorn's like the representation of the Jewish people who just kept almost failing until she finally fails I, I think at some point I have a feeling at some point she's gonna get to a point where she actually fails and at that point like it's gonna it's like she, and then she's gonna have another year tacked onto her life it's or her sentence, and it's probably gonna, like, you know, segue into, like, the eighth book or something. <laughs> the eighth book of, like, her, like, having to just live through the fact that she did that. And so, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a very interesting, long, um, almost grueling process for her, and she's dealing with the Tower of Thorns, and she has all this rage, hate, and anger, and hurt, and Grim is dealing with Grim. Grim has a lot of interesting stories going on um honestly like i mean he has such an interesting storyline going on out there that i just i i'm enjoying it quite a bit honestly and um you you learn more about him and, and like basically i mean honestly tower of thorns is about grim becoming a man again like just getting getting away from just the turmoil that he was in unjustly as it seems but getting away from it and becoming a man like becoming the man he should have been and in in the moral sense if you will and he's not he's not even quite there yet but he is like grown he, like book 2 was for grim grim to grow and book 3 i mean i'll, I'll go we'll say a little bit about book 3 book 3 seems to be like about both of them growing, but we'll see. I'm not like I'm, I'm not that far into the. I'm I'm almost halfway through the book, 
right now, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to give Tower of Thorns a 4 out of 5 star rating. I believe I gave that to the last book, but I mean, again, 4 out of 5 star rating because it just there's always something I nitpick when it comes to some of these books and that always costs a star and so here we go again cost a star because again it um I don't think she handled I don't think Juliet Marillier handled that pacing well enough for me to warrant giving her a five star rating but she still like made a very enjoyable world for me and I enjoyed what I read if you know what I mean and um it was still pretty good like the plot was good it was folk tale retellings. I mean, that's basically what I expect from a folk tale retelling, and, and it is what it is. And that's what people need to realize, is that it is what it is. It's a folk tale retelling, and she does a very good job with that. So, four out of five stars. That's the end of my review. You guys have a wonderful day.